All right, let's totally change gears here and talk about the uh, 3G schools. There was some controversy over that as well this week. Uh, you had uh, MSCS go before the county commission warning them that the way things are looking, they'll probably be needing $125 million at least uh, for a new high school to replace Germantown High School and the kids who are there. And this story is so funny when we have new people come into the newsroom from other states and we're trying to explain to them <laughs> different quirks about living in Memphis, Tennessee. This is one of those they're like, now wait a second. So Germantown High School, middle and elementary are in Germantown, but they're not part of the Germantown district. Right, right. They're part of the Memphis Shelby County district. Well, right. right. And most of the kids who go to those schools don't live in Germantown either. They are bused in literally from as far as Highway 64 in uh, northern Cordova all the way uh, down to Germantown High School because there's no other school for them to go to. That's right. <laughs> but anyway, a state law gets passed saying, nope, we can't do that anymore. Uh, you can't have uh, a school system operate schools within another school district's jurisdiction. So it's really just a, 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 a sticky situation like some of the others we've talked about today. But it looks like because of the state law, eventually Memphis Shelby County Schools is going to have to find a or build more buildings to accommodate those kids. I think it's easier to change the state law. They should change the state law because we're building more schools out in the suburbs because people are building homes out there, right? But, you know, we still have all of these schools within the city of Memphis that a lot of them are almost vacant. Yeah. So, you know, the, the state law needs to change so there can be some type of agreement between school systems, I think, that, you know, they can work together and students can attend Germantown High School, Germantown Middle. Mm -hmm. um, because having to allocate all of this funding to build new schools, where are you going to get the money from? What are your thoughts as the former school board member yeah. here on the panel? Well, yeah. there, there couldn't actually be a more exciting time to be on the search committee uh, to try to find a new superintendent because I think that, and, and Deidre referred to this, I think that the model of public education has changed forever and it didn't just change, it changed years ago and we've been trying to adapt to it and, and catch up with it. We're going to have to change it completely from the ground up. Perhaps the state will agree to um, allow maybe a year, another year, for us to work it out. Let's try to find a superintendent who is not locked into traditional public ed education methodology. Let's bring in the corporate community. Let's get these people from uh, their, their high corporate offices and come down on the ground, deal with these children, and come up with educational forms that are really relevant to the times. Maybe they're not going to be tied to buildings. Maybe we're not going right. to need brick and mortar as much as we do. Maybe we can use the corporate community with all of this empty space they've got mm -hmm. uh, in some of these corporate office buildings. We've got to work with MATA. We've got to work mm -hmm. with the corporate community. We've got, maybe we don't need a superintendent. Maybe we need business people. Let the teachers teach. Let the principals be principals. And let's take advantage of this opportunity tr to transform public education. Now, we can't keep pouring money into it. Just a couple of weeks on this program, you were questioning why is the corporate community, namely the Greater Memphis Chamber, involved in the superintendent? My question was why do they get to, to give edicts and give direction without getting their butts down here on the ground <laughs> with the it. people who are working okay. with these children? That's what I mean. How do, why do they get to have PR? Uh, uh, okay, no, no <laughs> Stop it, no Hold on, now. Hold on. <laughs> why do they get to make these pronouncements without actually rolling up their sleeves and putting their money, their considerable money, where their mouths are? Okay, that's a, I would think that's a fair question. Scott, Scott said something that made me think about um, something that um, Journey Community Schools did. When they needed a new building, there was an old building out in Hickory Hill that was like a Jolly Royal or something that they built out and mm -hmm. they made it a new school. So there may be an option where there's some infrastructure somewhere there's no already doubt about in place. Absolutely there's in no place doubt about you it. don't have to have $134 million, mm -hmm. but you can build out a space that's already in existence. There is no doubt about that. Yeah. Well, I think it's also a, a, something we don't talk about often either, is even though uh, nothing against Germantown High School, this is just the way the zoning has worked out. But when you have kids that are having to be brought in from so far to the north, it's hard for parents to be involved in that school community and involved with the PTA. It's impossible. If they're 20 miles away from the school. That's it's so impossible true. for them. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. And then they're working, some of them working two jobs. 
It's and just in hard. In their neighborhoods, in their neighborhoods, yeah. I guarantee you there is already existing some corporate space yeah. that's already built out to the extent mm -hmm. that it needs to be mm -hmm. for smaller classrooms. Yeah. I'm telling you, Richard, maybe since she's on this show today, we're going to get some traction <laughs> in the corporate community because it's not just me. It's not just me saying it. She knows it, you know it, our children know it, our parents know it. Right. We can't continue to push the kids down, man. I hope that they'll give us another year. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think I probably so we'll, we'll take that. They have also promised that none of the kids who are currently enrolled in those schools will have to move schools. They will get to finish their educations, regardless of who owns the schools, whether it's Germantown or MSCS, where they are currently placed. So that, that is good news for those kids. Right. That's all we have time for, but I want to thank both of you for being here very much. Always a lively conversation and fun. And thank you at home as well for being here too. We'll see you next week for ABC 24 This Week.